Dr. Graham, are nori rolls actually vegan? This is, I think this is a, a, a slightly, slightly more complicated than perhaps the answer you wanted to know if I was going to give you a, if I had only, my only choice was yes or no, I might have to say no. Uh, we, we start out with the idea of, of the single-celled organisms in the ocean being the filter feeders for the ocean. They're the they're essentially the liver and the lungs of the ocean. The, the toxins that are in the water get filtered through these, these they're known as protists, the single-celled organisms, the, the, even some of the seaweeds or so-called seaweeds. Um, they're not really weeds. Uh, yes, they do grow in the sea, Scientists are quite quite mixed. If you if you open up a dictionary or an encyclopedia or look to learn more about protists, uh, what we find it's a, it's an entire class of of organisms known as protista. But the protists are special because the scientists are are just not sure what to call them. Uh, either some scientists say that these are a special kind of animal that produces chlorophyll, which is unknown. There aren't any animals that produce chlorophyll, although although the three-toed Central American sloth moves so slowly and is so wet so much of the time that they actually grow moss on their hair and that's a normal part of of things for them so they they can go green at least on their north side um, they can go green but they're not actually it's not the animal producing the chlorophyll it's the moss growing on their hair so the re the other half of the Scientists who say no, 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 it can't possibly be an animal that produces its own chlorophyll, you know, and photosynthesizes. That's just not what animals do. Well, then the other scientists say, well, if it's not that, then it's definitely not a plant. It must be that protista is its own unique group, neither animal nor plant, but protista. So if, if this would be a horrible thing, if this, if they're right, and they may well be, I mean, this just changes the whole parameter of your 20 questions game. You know, you have to go animal, vegetable, mineral, protista. Um, it's just, uh, it's just not going to be the same. But regardless of that, if if protista are animals that photosynthesize well they're definitely not vegan if they're if they're protista a world of their own well then they're definitely not plants are they vegan at that point well they might be vegan at that point because they're not animals i mean it'd be like eating a rock right i mean it's vegan you can eat all the rock you want um, it's it's vegan so then we come into the ethics of the harvest and when we harvest when we harvest nori in large quantities especially I mean you're harvesting a lot of other things besides just nori and everything else is pretty much animals it's basically massive quantities of shrimp and a whole bunch of other animals and little fish and goodness knows what all krill and, and I don't know what all the things are that come out but if you ever look at seaweed on the beach it's just teeming with wildlife little guys jumping around and crawling and sliding and you know from jellyfish to starfish to seahorse to every kind of fish so there's just no way to really especially if you're pulling the nori out of the sea. Now, is it possible to grow nori in tanks? Um, 
I've not heard of nori being grown in tanks as of yet, but you know, would it at that point be vegan? Well, you still have to decide whether or not it's a animal that photosynthesizes or not. But the fact that it's harvested along with a whole bunch of other creatures, and those creatures lose the plot. I mean, they're definitely killed as the nori is brought around to its drying stages. At that point, you have to think, well, let's say it was a plant. Would I eat it? In terms of my vegan ethics, would I eat it even though I know that it's it's the liver of the ocean? It's where the toxins end up. And then do we want to really start recycling that stuff through us? Um, personally, even with all of that said, I haven't had any I I gotta really think when was the last time I had nori? I haven't had any nori this year for sure. I might have had a nori sheet or two in 2014. I can't say I'm I think I did. But if you know I could go a decade without ever having any of it. But if I went to somebody's house and then spent all that time to make something that was some spectacular raw vegan 80 10 10 rolled up thing with a nor am I, am I really gonna i certainly can't give this answer as to why i'm not eating it i might go oh I'm, <laughs> my, stomach, my stomach's a little touchy about the smell of nori something about the smell of nori and i just can't get past it you know but in reality i'd probably just I, i'm a firm believer that what i do once in a while is is not going to be the thing that brings me down um, but that what i do all the time is definitely that which upon i can build a, a heck of a foundation and rise uh, so while even i draw the line somewhere and we all have to draw a line somewhere i mean i'm not going to eat meat once in a while i'm not going to smoke cigarettes once in a while um i don't I don't drink either alcoholic stuff, but it's just not going to be. I don't drink, but if I if I toasted the bride or toasted the wedding couple at a wedding by taking a sip of whatever the wine was or you know champagne, I guess it'd probably be. I mean, really, all it is is fermented grapes, eh? It's not the end of the world. I'm not going to go off the deep end tomorrow and drink a couple bottles of champagne. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, it's... So I, I think having that understanding of whether or not we're talking about regular use, daily use, health, is it a health food, or I should concentrate my efforts on nori, or what would happen if once in a decade I had a nori sheet, you know, I think these things are worth noting, um, and it's certainly worth cons your consideration in thinking of your answer. Now, the, the other part of the question is, when do you eat it? Because, you know, if you're the if you're the health nut in your family, and you're the one everybody's looking to to see, because you're leading the way, and everybody's looking at you to see what are you going to do, how has your lifestyle evolved, how has it changed, and you know, what are you doing to lead the way? And then it's a family meal and, and you made, intentionally made nori sheets and that's what you're going to have. Well, we're going to look at you and say, well, if he did it, you know, at our meal, then it's probably something that's okay and I could do it whenever I want. And that might not be the message that you wish to convey. So uh, I think there's more to consider sometimes than initially meets our eye. If you've tried other raw food diets, dabbled with 80-10-10, or if you're currently struggling to figure out how to incorporate the 80-10-10 diet into your life, here's a solution to help you succeed. Dr. Graham has created the 80-10-10 online kickstart program to give you everything you need for success, including his personal tips and insights. Have Dr. Graham virtually hold your hand as he guides you to higher levels of health, energy, and fitness. 
It's absolutely the fastest way to adopt 801010 and integrate it into your life easily and painlessly. The 801010 Kickstart program is built around addressing the six biggest challenges people face when adopting 801010, and Dr. Graham deals with them head on. Complete clarity on the 801010 guidelines, how to enjoyably manage eating at home, work, and socially, how to set up successful daily routines, a wide variety of meal ideas, how to go about buying food, and how to set up a kitchen that'll make it easy for you to succeed. If you don't want to waste your time fooling around with trial and error and want to get on the right track straight away, then get started now. There's even an unconditional, no questions asked, 30-day money-back guarantee. So there's nothing to lose, and you stand to gain a lifetime of health and wellness.